Well, hello, this is Mr. Hornsby 3. This is the Mr. Hornsby 3 show, and unlike Frankie Friday, the video did not abruptly start. But, you know, I want to start something since I didn't freaking get to do it Friday because this happened Friday, but I want to say rest in peace to Kevin Sullivan. He passed away Friday. I was going to handle it with the playthrough, but because of the fact that the freaking playthrough uh start it before i was even ready to start it i decided to do a tribute to the kevin sullivan so rest in peace kevin sullivan the thoughts and prayers goes out to the family of kevin sullivan and you know kevin sullivan was a decent worker i'll say that <laughs> now let's get on to nightmare on elm street well a new nightmare review I don't know if I've ever viewed this on YouTube before or not, but I don't think I have. Earlier, I also did a short where I was heading into the gym. I don't think I reviewed it on YouTube yet, but I'm going to review it on YouTube today. And if I have, then I'll probably go over things I didn't go over on the YouTube the other day. And I had to mute the TV because the freaking music was playing from the freaking thing. Alright, so... Nightmare on Elm I'm going to be telling you mostly my problems with the new Nightmare. What's Craven for doing? So, my number one problem with Wes Craven's A New Nightmare is the fact that they based it in reality. I didn't care too much for that. Now, look, if the story was that, like, Nancy or, like, Heather Langenkamp or freaking... Her son Dylan, which, I mean, they kind of play with a little bit in this freaking movie, but... The idea was, uh, her going crazy and thinking she was seeing Freddy everywhere, or freaking her son Dylan going crazy and thinking they were seeing Freddy everywhere. And they had some kind of other storytelling devices to it that would work. I think that would be better than this, but one of the main reasons why I think this movie's overrated is because... So many people talk about how great it is. Oh, it's new. You know, it's better than Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6. It's better than Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. But honestly, I like those movies better than this movie. I don't hate this movie. I think it's a good movie, but it's overrated. It's not one of the greatest. I think 1, 3, and 4 are probably the greatest Night Run Out Street movies in my opinion. One, three, or four were the greatest. But New Nightmare, I'd say it's up there with them. But one of the main things too is, you know, this whole plot, the plot is just so stupid with, oh, you know, let's go over to where she's talking to Wes Craven. Yeah, they don't even show the part where she's talking about the crazy. Alright, anyway. I'll just go here. So, the plot with Wes Craven saying that, you know, after they stopped making the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, the fact of the matter was this demon entity that disguised itself as Freddy is running around freely and causing chaos and causing her son anxiety causing him to go crazy he's calling her and causing her to go crazy she'll go for the trip oh oh move oh yeah, he's causing her to go crazy he's causing her son to go crazy and the only way for her to beat him is if she plays nancy one more time which is kind of stupid because you think about it. Yeah, he was. She was the freaking first one to beat Freddy. But and that's a big butt here. But he killed her in part three, and she barely beat him. She took a leap of faith on possibly thinking that if she walked away from Freddy, that that would make him go away, which it did. But the problem is, why is this entity, I mean, it's not like he didn't get revenge on Nancy and beat, kill her in part three. The other thing, too, is that everybody's wanting the character of Heather Langenkamp to come back to play Nancy, but they killed, they even acknowledge three in this movie. They killed Nancy off at the end of three. She fell for one of 
Freddie's tricks, disguising herself as his dad. Well, as her dad. So, how in the world is it that Freddy Krueger wants her specifically? Makes no sense. And that she has to play Nancy again. If they're going to do a movie like this, why do it with her being killed off at three? Why kill her off at three then? I think Nancy had her final encounter with Freddy in three, and she, you know, she saved Kristen and all that, but that's how her and Nancy's arc should have ended. I mean, it's not like, you, you know, Nancy was Alice who beat Freddy twice. By the way, since, you know, it is Halloween, right? You'll be seeing me in the next video, uh, sporting this little, uh, can holder thing for the next video. Which I'll talk about in the next video is later on in this video. Another problem with this is there's too many plots, too many plot holes and inconsistencies with this. Because at one point, she said, Nancy says, well, after, you know, pretty much after three... I stayed out of it. And then they also said something about the original five, so I guess this was supposed to be a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6. But that they do acknowledge Freddy's dead in this movie as well, so how is this a remake of Part 6? That's another. Other thing, too, is uh, once she goes to meet with Robert Shea after this interview, as you're seeing on the screen here, they asked her to play Nancy again. Well, no, it's not there. Right here. Yeah, between the uh, 6 and 7 scene. But <laughs> when they asked her to play Nancy, um, Bob Shea says that Wes called him, talking about he's having nightmares again, and talking about he wants to make a Freddy movie. And he's like, well, it's been 10 years since Wes Craven called me. Well, wait a minute, what? What? If I'm not mistaken... Didn't Wes Craven co-write and pro or produce frickin' Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3? I could have sworn Nightmare on Elm Street 3 had Wes Craven at the helm. He was supposed to do 2, but he didn't want to do a sequel. And then they got him to come in for 3, so... It's been 10 years. This is 1994. Unless this was based in 1996 or 1997, which I highly doubt it is. Then it been t this movie came out in 1994. The original Nightmare on Elm Street came out in 1984, which was the same year my wife was born. But 86 or 87 was when Nightmare on Elm Street 3 came out. So how in the world had it been 10 years since Wes Craven had talked to Bob Shea and them about a Nightmare on Elm Street movie? And also uh, Bob Shea says this is going to be the definitive Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And, you know, as far as the character of the movie and the movie. See, this movie's so freaking confusing. You gotta say the character of the movie into this movie. What's Craven's new nightmare? Now, I mean, I just don't get it. You know, you're gonna sit there and say that, uh, and then you want her to play Nancy even though they killed off Nancy. It makes no sense. Even when uh, Robert Shea's talking to her, she's like, well, I thought you killed off Freddy. Which was the reference for Nightmare on Elm Street 6, Freddy's dead. But, you know, honestly, I don't hate any Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But, honestly, I freaking... Uh, honestly, I kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street 6. It's not, I know it's not the greatest Nightmare on Elm Street. I also like 5 too. It's not really a Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, uh, maybe 2 I don't like. Kind of like with Friday the 13th or freaking, you know, some of my favorite horror franchises. There's not one I totally hate. Unless it's freaking Halloween Resurrection. I hate that movie. Even with freaking Friday the 13th Part 5. I don't hate Friday the 13th Part 5. I like Friday the 13th Part 5. It's just not as good as the other ones. So anyway, outside of this story plot being having a lot of plot holes and inconsistencies and all that stuff, they got the story of Dylan, which is a pretty good story. Uh, if you've seen the fan film that was on YouTube last year, Dylan's New Nightmare, which came out right before they did um, 
right before they did the Never Hike Alone sequel, with which had Tom Matthews come back as Tommy Jarvis, and finally, once and for all, put an end to Jason Voorhees. Or so they think, I don't know. We'll see in a couple of years if another fan film comes out. But, I like the story of Dylan going crazy, you know, on Nightmare on Street. Also, the freaking doctor in this. She's one of the, you know, you can tell they're doing a social commentary on those people that blame movies for people for, uh, for the, what people do in real life. Now, imagine had Dylan ever seen Nightmare on Elm Street. What if he's going crazy? Or what if he having Freddy dreams? I don't know because I don't think he watched any of the Nightmare on Elm Street before the first scene where he's acting crazy. Now, after he started acting crazy, then he's seen a couple of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Mainly part one. Um, but, other than that, he really didn't see the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But this doctor thinks it's because she let Dylan watch the movies that, you know, Dylan is uh, acting crazy and blah, blah, blah. Another thing, too, is they bring John Saxon back in. He plays himself as a friend of Nancy, or Heather. But then they have him play freaking her dad as well. That's the end credits. And, you know, and honestly, like I said, I get what they're trying to get with, with this concept. But, you know, outside of all the stuff that's going on with Freddy and that, this movie's kind of boring. I mean... All the other stuff's kind of boring, but then when Freddy started, when Freddy's showing up and all that, that's like probably the most exciting part. There's something major happens where like Dylan freaks out and goes crazy again, or you know, Dylan like in this scene right here where he tries to reach God, because uh, I think Heather told him uh, God wanted to take her daddy. That's why he died because her her husband gets killed in this, and. You know, Dylan tries to reach God and he jumps off this big high freaking thing in the park and Heather barely catches him and he don't get injured but she gets a bad leg well he's just uh, I don't know just, just alright <laughs> nothing that happened he didn't get no injuries or nothing but yet he when she like when he's like oh God wanted to take me also Wes Craven had you know there's a point where she's talking to Robert England, which is like in this scene here. And Robert tells her, you know, when he talked to Wes at the funeral, which happened two, two scenes before the freaking try to reach God thing, that, uh, you know, he was as far as Dylan trying to reach God. So, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. By the way, what all did Robert England's character know in this movie? Because apparently, you know, toward the end, his character was kind of being shady. At first, he was being all cool and buddy-buddy with Heather, making jokes about them doing a romantic slasher or something and all that stuff. Then later on in the movie, he's kind of acting shady, and he's drawing the freaking Freddy that, uh, Nancy, or freaking Heather and Dylan's been seeing in the dream world. So, I wonder what, uh... What the heck did Robert Ingram's character know in this movie? And then, you know, he disappears after he talks to Heather on the phone. And I think, one thing too, I think the name of his wife is Loretta. And I think his wife's name was Loretta. And Freddy's dead. So, that's kind of funny. I don't know if a lot of people picked up on that, but I did. But, no, yeah, overall, yeah, this movie's still a good movie. It's one of the better Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But I'm not going to say it's the best, and I think it's a tad bit overrated. You know, a lot of people put this under part one. People say one's a great, then this one, and then three. Honestly, if I'm going with that, I'll go one, three, four, then I'll go a new nightmare. Because this movie's like totally over overrated. And the way they freaking beat Freddy at the end, I mean, it was so stupid and campy. They used the freaking Hansel and Gretel, which by the way, earlier in the movie, they established that she brings Hansel and Gretel to her son before he goes to bed. And there's the part where he freaks out because she wouldn't finish the story because she thought it was too violent and freaking he says the rest of the freaking story. But then they put Freddy in this big old oven and set him on fire. And, I don't know. It was just stupid. The only way they beat Freddy in this is... Now look, Freddy's died a lot of dumb ways in the Nightmare on Street movies. But 
it kind of made sense in the form of the story. This one, just like one little thing from uh, Hansel and Gretel, and that's why, that's how they beat Freddy at the end. That's, I don't know, it's just stupid. I don't know. Overall, though, like I said, I do like the movie. I don't totally hate it. But as far as what I just said about the movie, I'll give this movie a three and a half out of five. Uh, but like I said, I like one, three, and four much better than this movie, so. And plus, you know, four has my favorite final girl, Alice. But, yeah. But that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts on this movie. I think it's a bit overrated. I gave reasons why I think it's overrated. And people, I think, got so nostalgic because they got Heather Langenkamp back to play frickin' herself and play Nancy in the movie. So, yeah. I mean, it's an overrated movie. It's kind of like with the new Halloween franchise. Although, I like Kills and Ends. I think they're pretty good. I did not like 2018, though. I thought 2018 was the worst of them. And, uh, you know, even though I like Kills and Ends, it still kind of ruined the Halloween franchise. So, yeah. But, anyway... Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. I think it's overrated, and I'm going to continue to think it's overrated until the day I die. Alright, so what's going on Wednesday? So Wednesday, I decided, you know, because originally I was going to do a Revisit 2000 on Facebook before they did all the stupid stuff. But instead, I am going to do a video where I talk about who... WCW should have made their new pillars in 2000 and also um, also going to talk about you know these guys being the guys that lead into the new WCW and you know they should have went into uh, you know like I said I like the new blood angle when it started in 2000 but the execution of it was terrible. So I'm going to talk about who should have been the top pillars in that revamped WCW for 2000. In a revamped WCW. But anyway, that'll do it. Please like this video. Subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter. Mr. H I think it's just my name. Follow my Facebook page, uh, Mr. Horns Bay 3 Show, and follow my business page, Trigen Toys. Those are my freaking, uh, I definitely want the Trigen Toys one to get more followers because I'm trying to grow my business. Uh, hit the bell notification and all that. If you want to, go check out my Zombies Ain't My Neighbors playthrough this past Friday. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys later and peace out.